In this video, we're going to continue to discuss the concept of causality in econometrics, and in particular, we're going to discuss the concepts of selection bias and that of the average causal effect. So in the last video, we discussed the situation which we're interested in, in un unpicking, which was essentially that do changes or, or do levels of infrastructure spending rather lead to declines in the rates of violence in regions in conflict zones? And we said that the problem in just comparing the mean level of violence in those states which did receive infrastructure spending with those which didn't was that essentially there was a positive selection for states which had high level of violence to receive levels of infrastructure spending. So there was a sort of reverse causal effect which was operating in the opposite direction to the one which we were actually interested in. And in the last video, we actually started to derive an expression for the difference in mean, which we would actually obtain by comparing the simple means of the two different groups. And we got this expression here. And now what we can do is we can actually make it into something which is a little bit more easy to deal with. So first of all, we've got the expected value of V1i, given that di is equal to one. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna take away from that the expected level of V0i given that di is equal to 1. And because I've taken it away, I'm now going to add it so that overall I've just sort of added nothing to the system. So I've got plus the expected value of V0i given that di is equal to 1 minus the expected level of V0i finally given that di is equal to 0. Okay, so why have I done that? Essentially, I've now got two different expressions. I've got this top expression here, and I've got this bottom expression. And as it turns out, this top expression here is what we normally call the average causal effect, or technically it's the average causal effect on the treated. Whereas this bottom expression here represents what we call selection bias. And I'm gonna explain why both of these terms represent each of these concepts in a moment. First of all, if we think about the average causal effect, well, we can write the average causal effect just using the expression which we've got up here. Essentially, both of these terms are both conditioned on the fact that di is equal to one, so I can just combine them. I, I can say, well, this is equivalent to the expected value of v1i minus v0i, given that di is equal to one. And when I write it like this, it becomes apparent that this term inside the parenthesis, or on the first half of the parenthesis, is just what I call di, which I call the causal effect um, of infrastructure spending in the last group, uh, in the last video, rather. And importantly, this is the causal effect of infrastructure spending for those states or those districts which actually did receive infrastructure spending, for those states which, for which di is equal to 1. And importantly, we don't actually observe V0i. So V0i here is counterfactual, but we can still include it now before we can sort of come up with anything better. And we expect that the average causal effect of infrastructure spending is gonna cause violence to decline. So we actually expect that this term should be less than zero. Okay, what about the selection bias effect? Well, the selection bias effect, I'm just going to write down as it is up there because I can't combine these two terms because they're conditioned on different levels of infrastructure spending. So I've got the expected level of violence or the expected level of V0i rather, given that di is equal to 1, minus the expected level of V0i given that di is equal to 0. And when you just compare these two terms, essentially this can be seen to represent the selection effect. Because what we expect is that those states which did receive infrastructure spending, had they not actually received infrastructure spending, so their V0i, would have actually had a greater level of violence than those states which ultimately didn't receive infrastructure spending. So what we expect is we expect that this term here is greater than zero. And we actually expect that when we look at the difference in means, this delta mu up here, which is just equal to the average causal effect plus the selection bias effect, you can see that because they're of opposite signs and often, and especially I think in this particular situation, the selection bias effect 
is likely much greater in magnitude than the average causal effect, then we expect that delta mu is going to be greater than zero. In other words, the selection bias effect has completely dominated the average causal effect, and that is why we might find that the average level of violence um, in those states which did receive infrastructure spending is higher than the average level of violence in those states which didn't receive infrastructure spending. It's reflective of the fact that the violence would have been higher anyway, which is that which is given, which is represented rather by the selection bias term. This second sort of the last line here, which I've explained. In the next video, I'm going to talk about the conditions under which we can still estimate the average causal effect. Um, and it, as we're going to see, it actually relies on the decision as to whether a state receives infrastructure spending being randomly assigned.